Hi guys, I wanted to do a video on Epstein-Barr virus, okay? So it's quite interesting because 90% of the population, adult population, has been infected with Epstein-Barr virus. Now the thing about viruses, is they're not alive. They're a piece of genetic material wrapped in a sack that can get activated when your resistance is lowered, okay? So the initial infection can create fever, fatigue, inflamed throat, swollen tonsils, and enlarged spleen, enlarged liver. Uh, I, I remember having Epstein-Barr when I was in high school. It was like really bad. It was all in my throat. And uh, they call it the kissing uh, virus because it's spread by saliva. So then over time, um, there's an association between this virus and chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, hypothyroidism, rheumatoid arthritis, Hodgkin's lymphoma, which by the way, also is caused by GMO glyphosate, uh, stomach cancer, MS, autoimmune conditions like lupus or Sjogren's, hypersensitivity to mosquito bites, and the list goes on and on and on. But what's interesting is that there's something called viral latency, which means the ability of a virus to lie dormant. So you get this initial infection and then it goes in remission. It sits there. It doesn't do anything, it just waits until it's activated. So what's interesting about this virus is once it gets reactivated, okay, only portions of the Epstein-Barr virus genes are expressed. So you can have this initial infection, but later in life, you may only have like fatigue kick in or achiness in the muscles or any other uh, additional things that can weaken your immune system to set you up for getting an autoimmune disease. So the real question is, what are the triggers that would reactivate this virus that is dormant? Nutritional deficiencies and stress, okay? But I believe stress is the top right here because so many people, um, they're fine, and then they have this stressor, let's say they get a divorce or something, and boom, they end up with an autoimmune disease. In fact, when I have talked to people over the last 29 years, many people that had autoimmune, I asked them, when did it start, and what happened just before? And one, one for one, it was either a loss or a major stress that activated the whole thing and brought this virus out of remission, activating certain genes, that then lower the immune system, setting them up to get an autoimmune disease. Okay, so that's a real common mechanism. So the question is, what can you do about it? Okay, well, what you wanna do is you wanna support the gland that's involved with stress. That would be the adrenal gland. Focus on supporting the adrenal glands. Do things to improve it. You know, get more sleep, go for long walks. Um, do techniques to pull stress out of your body. Selenium is very, very important. Magnesium is very important. Boron, the mineral, trace mineral boron is very important in helping put this virus back in remission. There's also something called monolaurin, which is uh, uh, made from coconut oil, which is really good for viruses as well. So these are some things that you can do, but I think the biggest thing you're gonna have to do is to uh, do whatever you can to lower the stress, change your environment to the point where that stress is no longer in the environment and that's going to actually help put this thing back in remission and chill these symptoms out right here because these really are symptoms of this virus or at least part of the virus activation. All right, so I put some links down below for some additional things you can do to actually help stress. Thanks for watching. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, press subscribe and I will definitely keep you updated.